entering the Glen Miller Orchestra under the direction of Ray McKinley. Also starring Johnny Desmond, Patty Clark, and the Castle Sisters. Presented by Kent Cigarettes. Kent with the Micronite filter. You'll feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. It's fun exploring new places, doing the things that add so much to the pleasure of living. And at times like these, it's so natural to light up a Kent. You'll feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. Kent with the Micronite filter. Refines away a harsh flavor. Refines away a hot taste. It makes the taste of a cigarette mild. You'll feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. And what? Once more to Glenn Miller time, coming to you tonight from Studio 50 in New York. Well, with the playing of Glenn's famous In the Mood on our first show, and tonight, we've come full circle to the end of this series. When I say we, I mean, of course, our wonderful cast, and naturally, my good friend and co-host, Mr. Johnny Desmond. Yeah, hey, John. Go skin. Hey, Ray. If I didn't hear you incorrectly, I thought you said Mr. Is that right? right? Well, it's a little bit formal now. Well, that's kind of peculiar. Well, I feel sort of peculiar tonight, Johnny. Just as everyone's getting to know each other, we got to say... Oh, hi. No. Goodbye. Well, oh, no, I'm saying hi to Pat. Oh. Hey, what's with him? Oh, Ray's feeling a little peculiar, Pat. You say that light. Yeah. It's so peculiar, uh -huh. you get so wet in the rain. And then what happens? You get so warm in the sunshine. It doesn't pay to complain. When I get up in the morning, nothing to breathe but air. Whenever I comb my hair, there's nothing to comb but hair. That's when I sit great. down to breakfast, there's nothing to eat but food. Well, life is so peculiar, but you can't stay home and brew. Yes, life. Tell them about it, John. It's so peculiar, uh -huh. the desert's only got sand. But what a beach. The ocean's only got water. You never know where you stand. When I go out to dinner, there's nothing to wear but clothes. Whenever I get thirsty, there's 
there's nothing to do but drink. Well, life is so peculiar that it makes you stop and think, Ah, life, ah, life, yeah, that is so peculiar. A, a fork belongs with a knife. Yeah. Yeah. Cabbage is lost without corned beef. I love corned beef. A husband should have a wife. Well, life is so peculiar that everybody says that. Likes of you, I like the things you do. I mean, I like the likes of you. Uh, you wouldn't be putting me on, would uh -uh, you, fellas? Baby, look at me. I like your eyes are blue. I think they're blue, don't you? Green. Oh, well then I mean I like your eyes are green. I got a feeling they're fooling. Uh -uh. I got a feeling they're having fun. We're putting you on. I'll give you a goodbye when you are. With me. Oh dear, if we could only say what we mean. We mean if we could mean what we say. That is, you mean to say that you mean to say that. We like the likes of you. Your looks are your looks. Looks like we like the likes of you. one minute to discuss some interesting facts about Kent cigarettes. Nature puts it into every blade of wheat, into every twig of the apple tree, into the stalk of every tobacco plant. And this same material is used to make the famous Micronite filter on your Kent cigarette. It's true. This pure, all-vegetable material arrives at the P. Lorillard factories looking like this. And specially designed machines separate this soft, fluffy material by air pressure, then compress it into the filter shape in an intricate network of tiny channels which refine smoking flavor. This is the process that creates the famous Micronite filter on your Kent cigarette. Kent, with the Micronite filter, refine the way harsh flavor, refine the way hot taste. It makes the taste of a cigarette mild. And that's why you'll feel better about smoking with a taste of Kent.
take out that cheesecake. I'll be right back. What's for dessert? Jell-O Instant Pudding in a delicious pudding cheesecake recipe. No cooking. You make it with lemon or new pineapple cream Jell-O Instant Pudding. Here's the recipe. Take one soft eight ounce package of cream cheese and stir till it gets creamy like this. Add two cups of milk, blending all the while, and one box of Jell-O Instant Pudding. Then beat slowly with an egg beater. A minute is about enough. Pour into a graham cracker crust. Sprinkle graham cracker crumbs on top to make it extra crunchy and chill. There, the most luxurious cheesecake ever made. And made with no cooking. You'll find the recipe on every box of lemon or new pineapple cream Jell-O Instant Pudding. What's for dessert? Jell-O Instant Pudding in this pudding cheesecake recipe. Delicious. Chicago, Chicago, Town. Chicago, Chicago, let me show you around. You love it, bet your bottom dollar you lose the blues in Chicago. Chicago, the town that Billy Sunday could not shut down. That was a tribute to her adopted hometown done by lovely Patty Clark. Patty, that was choice. Thank you. Okay, boys, take five. Okay, hey, oh. hey, Ray. What's the matter? Look out, you don't get run over here. <laughs> Let's step up here on the platform. I want to ask you a question. You said take five. That means small combo time, doesn't That's it? That's right. I guess it does, Johnny. Well, what's going to be tonight, Ray? Well, we took a vote, and uh, one party voted for you came a long way from St. Oh, Louis. I like that very much. Another party voted for Mississippi Mud. I like that one, too. Not bad. But what's going to be the winner? Uh, that's a plenty by an independent party. Well, I get my vote every time. All right. <laughs> Rhythm's got a lot of heat in it. I bet you five, ten to five. Gonna get you doing what it's doing to me. When the Dixie Land comes, who's the not of it? The Dixie Landers are proud of it. They call it jazz. What it has, that's plenty for me. Let me take you down to New Orleans, to Basin Street, to New Orleans. You don't have to have the means. A little bit of rhythm and you walk right with them. Shut my big brown roll tonight. You don't rock it to the sky. Hey, boy, hey, boy, that's plenty for me. Now nah, you're gonna get mellow when that fellow blows his horn. Down where the blues were born, you be gone. The drummer hits something and starts saying, jump it. Beat it out, brother, there ain't no other remedy. And that's a plenty, that's a plenty for me.
plenty, but you know, I never seem to get enough of it. <laughs> well, thank you, Johnny. And also, you know what? We'd like to take a minute to add our thanks to all you nice people who've written so many wonderful letters to us these past 10 weeks. Unfortunately, there have been far too many for us to answer, so please accept our personal thanks in place of a written reply. You know, Ray, from all those letters, it seems like we made a lot of new friends and uh, stirred up a lot of memories of our old ones. You're right there, John, and uh, peculiarly enough, Johnny, one of those letters stirred up a lot of memories of ours, right? Yeah, I know the one you mean, Ray. And although we've never been ceased, or I should say we've never ceased to be amazed by what Glenn Miller did musically for his country, this kind of letter will make sure that we never forget. Ray? Thank you, John. I'd like to read it to you now, and I wouldn't be surprised if there weren't quite a few folks out there who might share this memory with us. Starts off, Dear Mr. McKinley, I wonder if you remember, as I did tonight, when you and your band played those wonderful Glenn Miller tunes. The war was on in full force for the U.S. Air Force in England almost 20 years ago. Our 466 heavy bomber group had been shot up pretty bad in daylight raids over Berlin. I was a special service officer and along with my captain was trying to figure something that might give our boys a lift. In the Stars and Stripes, I read that Glenn Miller and his band had landed in London. The next day I was in London too and found Mr. Miller at a Red Cross unit. I told him about our B-24 group and how much he and his orchestra were needed at our base. His reply was simple and direct. Where is your base? How do we get there? And when do you want us? We had a huge hangar on the base, big enough to hold a dozen B-24s. The day before Miller's date, we cleaned it out down to the last screwdriver. Then we spread cornmeal over the concrete and oil patches so we could dance. After we ran out of cornmeal, which we'd saved up for three weeks, we ground up those little crystal bags which were packed with our spare airplane engines to absorb moisture. We had to tear open about a dozen engines, I recall, to get enough crystals to finish covering the floor. Miller's day came and we sent three bombers down to London to get him and the band. It was rather unfortunate that the 8th Air Force had picked that day for a maximum effort raid. Just as Miller's bombers arrived over the field from London, so did our shot up bombers arrive back from Germany. Red flares were dropping all over the airfield as our crippled B-24s signaled for emergency landings. Somehow or other, the tower got the combat planes and Miller's planes out of the air and on the ground. Despite our best efforts to keep the lid on Miller's appearance, word had spread to U.S. bases for miles around. By 6 o'clock that night, there must have been better than a thousand GIs and officers who arrived by bicycle, jeep, truck, and on foot. And, of course, the English girls. There were hundreds of them. The party was ready. Miller's band climbed on the bomb trucks. Better than 5,000 GIs, officers, English soldiers, and girls jammed the place. From the base hospital, we had carried to the hangar every guy who was bedridden. Then Mr. Miller came up to the front of the band. He sort of stood there for a minute, and it got awfully quiet. Then from the band came the strains of Moonlight Serenade, soft and teasing like. It was along about the fifth or sixth note, I guess, when the greatest roar went up that I've ever heard, before or since. We were home. And then the darndest thing happened. When those thousands of bawling airmen and gals started to dance, the GI boots crushed the cornmeal and crystals until the noise was deafening. Mr. Miller stopped the band, and over the mic he said, he wanted to play, but would everyone please move in towards the bandstand and just listen? And that's what we did for three solid hours. Miller never stopped playing. He had a great drummer, I remember, who did some solos, and every time he did, we nearly yelled the roof off. The next morning early, we lined up the bombers on the strip to take the band back to London. It was another mission day over Germany, I remember, and we had to get the band off first. As his musicians were getting aboard, the entire complement of the base began to filter to the flight line. By the time the last plane was loaded, we were all there, 1,800 strong, except for the ones in the hospital. Our colonel walked out to the flight line with Mr. Miller and shook hands. As Mr. Miller turned to climb in, a GI in the tower yelled over the tannoy system, Attention! 1,800 officers and men came to attention and gave Mr. Miller and his band their salute. It was probably one of the few times anywhere during the war that 1,800 airmen saluted anybody and meant it. Mr. McKinley, that's what I was thinking about tonight when I heard your great band on television. 
And I just wanted to tell you about it and to say again, thank you. Sincerely, Walter T. Murphy. Now here's Johnny Desmond to sing, as he did over there, the lovely Glenn Miller theme song, Moonlight Serenade. I stand at your gates And the song that I sing Is of moonlight I stand of your hand in the June night the roses are sighing a moonlight serenade the stars are aglow and tonight how their light sets me dreaming my When you see this little old pack of Kent, ever ask yourself why you feel better smoking with the taste of Kent? Well, if harsh flavor and hot taste disturb your smoking pleasures as much as they do mine, you've got your answer. Because Kent refines them both the way, and that's the truth. So take a tip from this Kent smoker. Try Kent with the Micronite filter. Glenn Miller time has been presented by Kent Cigarettes. Kent with the Micronite filter. You'll feel better about smoking with the taste of Kent. Yay, hey, Johnny. Well, I guess it's time to put our songs away for another day and to say so long to all you nice people out there. And uh, be sure to watch the Alan King Show next week, won't you? This station at this time. Until we meet again, friends, from the P. Laura Lord, the makers of Kent Cigarettes. And General Foods, the makers of delicious Jello. The Castle Sisters, all the boys in the band. Daddy Clark. Old John Desmond here. Ray McKinley, yours truly. Have a good time. And stay happy. <laughs> Fashions by Mr. Moore. This program is being recorded for viewing by our military forces overseas. Johnny Olson speaking for Glenn Miller Time, saying thank you and good night. Men, you wake up with a headache and you're married too. Tune in Monday night, September 18th. We'll have a good cry together.